So your two-part calcium and alkalinity dosers are dialed in, corals are growing great, and everything is running smoothly, but what happens if your dosing containers run dry, or the tubing gets kinked, or your doser gets shut off or fails, and your corals are cut off from the one stable source of additives that fuel their growth? What if the opposite happens and your doser gets stuck on or you miscalculated for too much, either causing skyrocketing pH or tons of precipitate? Most of these two-part dosing issues could lead to catastrophic events in your tank if not caught in time, but there are still a handful of other dosing problems that might be happening to you right now and you don't even notice. What those issues are and how to solve all of them using your Neptune Apex is what today's episode is all about. Hey guys, Randy here with BRS TV's guide to mastering your Neptune Apex controller where we show you how to use your Apex to improve your equipment's performance and avoid a ton of inevitable issues that all reefers face. Two-part and four-part calcium and alkalinity additive dosing seems pretty easy and straightforward because it is one of the easiest and most effective ways to get the job done. Just plug in your dosers to a timer or use their onboard programming to set your tank's dose and watch your corals grow. Yet there is a laundry list of potentially catastrophic two-part dosing issues that will eventually happen to most of us and an even longer list of issues that affect dosing maintenance and convenience all of which I'll show you how to solve today using your Apex. So before we get into safely setting up your dosers to avoid over or under dosing, or how to always keep your dosing containers for, or tools that you can use to actively monitor changes to your tank or trends to your tank parameters, I have to say that the surprise value in today's episode revolves around the Neptune Dose and Trident, two Neptune accessories specifically designed to make two-part dosing even easier than it already is. Although great tools on their own, when combined together they can dose additives better, more consistently and safer than any other dosing option available in the hobby. To get started, let's first talk about how to solve the two most disastrous issues that could happen with your two-part dosing approach, regardless of the dosing pumps that you use, and that is overdosing or underdosing. Typically we start with the task function to initially set up our gear on the Apex, but since there isn't a task function specific for dosers outside of the Neptune Dose, I'll share the quickest and most simplest way I've found to get yours up and running, whether they're the very popular BRS 1.1 mil dosers or any other dosing pump with onboard controls. Let's start with the two BRS dosers, one for calcium and one for alkalinity, where you've plugged them into outlet number four and outlet number eight on the EB832. Choose the gear icon for one of them, rename it for its purpose like I've done with ALK Doser, choose Advanced from the drop down menu and make sure your fallback and set are both off. Now we can use the Apex as a digital timer to dial in the proper dose amount. The BRS calculator told me that I need 110 mils per day for both calcium and alkalinity, which means each 1.1 mil doser will need to be on for 100 minutes or a total of one hour and 40 minutes each day. The easiest way to do this is to write a line in my ALK doser outlet that says if time 1 a.m. to 2.39 a.m. then on and hit the send button. I can repeat the same process for my calcium doser outlet which I've named Cal Doser, the only difference being that I changed the time of day from 9 to 10.39 a.m. so they are on at different times to avoid precipitate. Of course there's always more than one way to approach this and you can split your tank's specific dose into multiple multiple times throughout the day using similar lines with longer or shorter on times, or for a more advanced approach, you can use a tool like this one from Reeftronics.net where you enter your desires into a couple of fields and generate the lines required to achieve them. As for other dosers with their own onboard dosage control, you can plug them into your Apex and set the outlet fallback to off and set to on, then program them independently using their own controls. However, now, with your dosing schedule set, you can add in protections and safety against overdosing and underdosing using Apex tools like calendar reminders, parameter logs, pH alerts, and pH notifications, and pH control. Most commonly, all reefers at some point have underdosed their tank, meaning you forgot to refill your dosing reservoir, or one of your dosing lines was kinked somewhere, or the tip of the line wound up getting clogged with precipitate, or your dosing pump was unplugged, switched off, or just up and died one day. 
The first step to solving an empty dosing container is to use a quick calendar reminder to help you stay on top of keeping it full. And for the other chances that you underdose your tank, you can use a combo of low pH alarms and Apex's testing logs to monitor trends to catch underdosing sooner. To add a calendar reminder, find the calendar icon at the top of your dashboard, choose add event, and tailor a reoccurring reminder for your tank like I've done here with the title Fill Alk Reservoir, reoccurring on the first of every month. And depending on your size of your reservoir or amount you dose your tank, this could be longer or shorter, but your chances that you forget are drastically reduced and a bit later when we add in optical sensors, nearly impossible. You can actually use high and low pH alarms as an indication for both underdosing and overdosing, which we'll set up in a second, but you can also use the Apex measurement log as well to follow trends in a graph format, which is much easier to read than my notebook. The measurement tool is pretty straightforward. Choose a test, pick your test kit brand, enter your reading, and you're done. Pro tip, if you made a mistake, just click on the show measurements icon and edit or remove them, but now you can use these trends to detect and fix potential dosing issues, which is something you can do completely autonomously without lifting a finger using a Neptune Trident, but we'll talk about that in a second. Now let's solve that potential caster fee that can happen from overdosing two parts to your tank, where your pumps got stuck on, or your dosing pump onboard controls were accidentally changed, or you keep increasing your calcium and alkalinity dose, but the levels just won't rise. In these examples, you can expect one of two results. Either you'll see a spike in pH from soda ash dose, or you'll see precipitate buildup from excess calcium and alkalinity, which will also happen from dosing the two at the same time and in close proximity to each other. This is where pH alerts and notifications come in to save the day, just like Ryan learned the hard way with his SPS dominated E170 tank when the dosing outlet got stuck on and he walked into a heart stopping cloudy tank. To solve this issue, find your probe alarm task function, choose your pH probe, set your min and max probe alarm ranges, which I like to keep at the apex recommended 7.8 and 8.4, and hit send. If your tank is below 7.8, it could indicate that your two part is not on because as alkalinity drops, so does pH. Or if your tank is above 8.4, it could indicate that your dosing pump is stuck on. If you're overdosing your tank and you want to do something about it before you get the chance to go check on it, you can add in a quick line to your alkalinity doser outlet that says if pH greater than 8.5, then off so you get the alert first and protect your tank if it continues. Earlier I told you that empty dosing containers was one of the main reasons you might underdose your tank, and we sorta of solved that with some calendar reminders, but if you really want to never run out of two-part solution again, optical sensors in the bottom of your reservoirs are the ticket. To add optical sensors to alert you when your calcium or alkalinity solutions are near empty, just mount the sensors near the bottom of your reservoir, connect them to an FMM module, and connect the FMM module to your apex. You can find new sensors in the unused tiles of your Fusion dashboard, bring them down, and name them something like I've done here with low alk and low cal, and you're ready to set them up for alerts. To get that email notification or text when the sensors are triggered, Click the gear icon for your email outlet and add in a couple of lines that say, if low alk open then on, and if low cal open then on, and you're ready to go, no more forgetting to refill your two part solutions. You could take the work out of this and use a DDR dual dosing reservoir, which has optical sensors already installed and connects directly into the Neptune dose. But note that the DDR doesn't connect to your apex. It has to go directly into the dose dosing pump. With these paired together, not only will you get a visual display for how much two-part solution is left in your DDR reservoirs, but you can also set up the email, text, or notifications that they are nearly empty using the optical sensors and a virtual outlet, which I'll cover in another episode. But the real star of the show is the Neptune Dose, and up next, you'll see exactly why. Before we get into all of those unique features of the Neptune Dose, let's first set yours up using the Dose Additive Dosing Task Function, which we will run twice, one for the left pump and one for the right. After you've connected your dosing lines to their respective two-part solutions and connected the dose to your apex, find the Dose Additive Task Function, choose your dose, choose your left or right dosing head, 
Rename it something like I did with my left pump for calcium being calcium dose. And now all you need to do is choose how many milliliters you need and how long you want it to space the dose out, which is by far the easiest way to get your dose right. After you repeat the process for your other dosing head, your Neptune dose will now automatically split up your specific two-part amount equally across any length of time you chose, meaning you can dose calcium for 10 hours during the day and alkalinity 10 hours during the night without the need to calculate or add lines to your outlet. And anytime you need to adjust the dosage amount, all you need to do is click that gear icon for calcium and alkalinity outlet choose modify interval and adjust the dose. Another common issue for most dosing pumps is that they don't always accurately dose the exact amount you tell it to or that it states on the label, meaning you either need to stay on top of calibration or adjust for the offset with your dosing schedule. That means over time, that 100 mils you thought you were dosing to your tank daily swings either up or down and can reduce the stability of your two part. Maintaining your dosing pump's calibration is the key to stability in this aspect, but the dose goes one step further and provides a visual display on your Fusion dashboard that tells you in real time how much it is dosed and provides a little bit of extra confidence that it's functioning properly. But what if you need to increase or decrease your tank's two-part dose because consumption has changed? If you're not testing your tank daily, how would you know that your parameters have changed in just a few hours or even a few days? If you made changes to your tank like setting up new lights or lighting schedule, adding a CO2 scrubber or fresh air skimmer intake, changed your feeding habits or started using coral foods, how do you know they're working? Well, there is a way to know for sure that the choices you make for your tank are working or not, and it's directly tied to calcium and alkalinity consumption. And one of the best ways of keeping track of those changing parameters is by testing more frequently and as consistently as possible to improve accuracy. But who has the time to test alkalinity of calcium and magnesium multiple times a day? the Neptune Trident does. The Trident has completely changed the way many of us reef, the benefits and possibilities of what can be achieved with real-time monitoring of calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium are massive. But as it relates to two-part dosing, we now have a tool that can alert you the second one of these key major element parameters fall or rise above target levels, and you can use daily calcium and alkalinity tracking to make smarter and more timely changes to two-part dosing amounts, you can shave minutes or hours off of your weekly tank maintenance schedule with automated testing of the most important tank elements. You can find out if your new lights, coral foods, CO2 scrubbers, or other tank changes are actually working because you have a graph of multiple tests throughout the day to monitor. You can even have the Trident automatically change your two-part dose for you through Trident-controlled dosing of your Neptune dose. And the best part is, there's an easy task function to set up each of these. I don't need to walk through all of the Trident task function steps because the team at Neptune has already done a solid job with a step-by-step -step setup videos incorporated into the task function to get you started. But there are a couple of tips I'll share to set up your alerts and notifications or have your dosing pumps turn off based on the calcium or alkalinity level from the Trident. First, if you wanna know when your calcium or alkalinity falls below or above your own safe range for your tank, there is a task function for that. Find probe alarm task, choose your alkalinity calcium or magnesium probe, set the min and max range for your own critical alerts and hit send. Also, should a catastrophe happen and your dosing pump were to get stuck on, you can use those calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium measurements to automatically turn your dosing pumps off, like I've done here on my alkalinity outlet that says, if alkalinity probe greater than 10.0, then off. Instead of pH alerts, calendar reminders, or other sensors indicating that calcium and alkalinity is not where it should be or something is wrong with a dosing pump, the Trident will provide a definitive window into each parameter, track those parameters with graphs, alert you when each one is off track, and protect your tank from failures 
or mistakes. It's tools like these and cool little apex tips like the float switch trick I share in this Master Your Skimmer episode over here that will certainly make the apex one of the best tools you ever added to your tank. So check that one out or the entire Master Your Neptune Apex series right here.